what I want to talk about today is how to take a song, a uh, popular song, and sort of make it your own for the purposes of, of jazz music. But before we get into some of the mechanicals of how we can do that, I'd like to first talk about why we would do that. And the main reason that we do that is that in jazz music, we're all required to know all these tunes that we call standards. Most of them are old pop tunes, uh, songs from Broadway shows, uh, songs from movies, things like that. And these songs were popular at the time that jazz musicians were remaking them into jazz versions of these songs. So for instance, uh, If I Were a Bell was from the popular musical Guys and Dolls. When, and so it was kind of in the popular consciousness of America when Miles recorded his version of that, which became now it's sort of a jazz standard. So we all play that as jazz musicians. And that's great for that time. We still play those tunes because they're sort of classics of the American songbook. But uh, in order to keep jazz music a living, breathing art form that has relevance to um, a different generation of listeners, it's uh, a good idea and it's helpful to recreate pop tunes that are in the consciousness of today's generation of listeners. One of the things you have to be careful of when you're doing this is not to sort of make Muzak versions of a song that people know and love because people usually don't, won't like you for it if you do that. So in other words, it's okay to cover something more or less the same if it lends itself to an instrumental version well and then it's got a good melody, uh, it's got a good harmony and it, it works for your instrumentation. That's fine. And it's straight covers work okay too. But there is the risk that you run of making it sound like just a watered down version of the original. So that's something to be careful of. One of the ways you can kind of get around that is to borrow from the jazz vocabulary, you know, and all of it. Take something from Weather Report or Wayne Shorter or Chick Corea, some little something, some little sound, and you can add it to the straight cover that you're doing to sort of give it that sort of jazz sensibility so that it's familiar to jazz listeners on a certain sense and that it sounds like jazz, but it also sounds like a pop tune that you're doing. And then you sort of remolded something that's a little bit different. It's a combination of both of those things. So it appeals to the jazz sensibility and also the collective American music sort of sensibility. So that's a little bit of the why we would take a song. So um, I just finished an album of all songs by Willie Nelson. It's called Crazy, the Music of Willie Nelson on Origin Records. And uh, I've taken a, a bunch of songs by Willie Nelson. Um, some are, are more popular than others and sort of recreated them for jazz, uh, jazz quintet. But I didn't make bebop versions of those tunes. I sort of made more modern jazz compositions out of them by sort of reducing them to their parts. So if you're going to take a song that's a pop song and recreate it for your own purposes, the first thing you have to do is sort of identify all of the elements of the music that are at play. And so if we think of music as being melody, harmony, and rhythm, and dynamics and other things, but primarily melody, harmony, and rhythm, uh, we want to take the song and think about what's the melody, figure out what that is, transcribe it, learn it on your instrument, what's the, mel uh, the harmony, and what's the rhythm. And so you've got your basic three building blocks of this tune. Now when you would hear jazz guys take a song, like If I Wore a Bell, one of the things they did to it that was different was they put a different kind of groove. They put a real swinging kind of thing underneath it. And they also opened it up for improvisation. So one of the things you can do is do the same thing. Although you don't have to make it into a swing feel, it could be a 70s funk fit feel, or it could be a drum and bass feel, or a house beat, or an Afro-Cuban 6-8, or anything. Just sort of a jazz straight eighth. Uh, any kind of feel. I mean, there's a million feels out there that we have at our disposal. So that's something you can change. You could also reharmonize the tune. You could keep the existing melody and put different harmony underneath. So you've got something that sounds different over a familiar melody. But the idea is you want to make it relevant to a listener who's not maybe not necessarily familiar with jazz music. You want somebody off the street to say, hey, they're playing this song by this band that I know, but they're doing it in a completely different, wild way. That engages the generation of listeners we want to get garner. 
That's how we keep jazz living and breathing. Another thing that you could do to is to take a song and you don't have to use the entirety of the song. You don't have to use the entire melody. Uh, you don't have to use all of the harmony if you're going to use the harmony. You could just use part of it. Uh, you could just use the verse. You could just use the chorus. You could just use the bridge. Uh, we did a song where I used just the background parts, never the melody. So I just kind of made it a free kind of thing using all the background things that happened behind uh, Willie Nelson singing. So it's not necessary for you to take the entire tune, just a piece of it uh, is, is sufficient if you, if you can develop that into a cogent idea. So one of the things that I did is I took this song called Phases and Stages by Willie Nelson. And I'll play a little piece of it. Circles and cycles Phases and stages and scenes that we've all seen before Let me tell you some more So we have this sort of this is this is from an album called Phases and Stages, and it's kind of a concept album for Willie Nelson. Uh, the song keeps reoccurring throughout the album, but this is sort of the main first statement of that song on the record. So, the, the first part of the song is... And then it goes into time, and the next part of the melody is... So I kept that part of it. And I also kept some of the harmony from the beginning. But I sort of made it more dramatic in that as Willie's introduction is out of time and kind of rubato, I added delay pedal to the trumpet sound and made it uh, very much sort of space agey sort of sounding. And then just as his version goes into time, my version goes into time too, but it has a different sort of feel to it. Instead of a country feel, obviously, it has a more um, hard edge to it. So this is what my version sounds like. where we've taken the introduction and kept the same harmony, pretty much the same melody and the same rhythm. We've, we've sort of changed the, che the texture of the original introduction by giving it this sort of ethereal quality by using a sound effect basically, the delay pedal, uh, the processed acoustic bass sound, the Moog synthesizer, the Fender Rose. So just by instrumentation we sort of created a, a texture that's different from the original phases and stages, which uh, gives a, a totally different connotation. The phases and stages seems a lot more space agey, while well, the original tune is really about a man and his wife breaking up. <laughs> so it changes the uh, sort of idea of the song, that there's no lyrics there. So not only can you change the melody, harmony, or rhythm, you can also just sort of change the texture by changing the instrumentation and the, the interpretation of the melody. So that's one, that's one way that you can take a song and make it your own. So good luck with that.